There are many hazards involved with grain handling and storage. These include entrapment in flowing grain or under falling grain, entanglement in equipment, electrocution, falls, traffic around the grain system, grain dust, and more. This brief video discusses how to use lockout tagout procedures with your grain system electrical control panels to make sure that equipment which is shut off for inspection, maintenance, or repairs stays shut off. There are six steps to a proper lockout tagout procedure. These steps include preparation by notifying all workers who are involved or who may be in the area, shutting down the equipment involved, isolating that equipment from energy sources such as electric current. For example, this might mean shutting off a circuit breaker, locking out and tagging the breaker, releasing any stored energy. For example, if there is electrical energy stored in the circuit or if some equipment might still move even after it has been shut down. And finally, verifying that the equipment has been isolated. Take nothing for granted, always verify to be sure. The underlying principle of lockout tagout is that each worker has their own lock to use when locking controls in the off position and carries the only key to that lock so that nobody else can remove it. Every worker who is working on or around that equipment locks out the controls and only after the last person is out of harm's way and removes their lock can the controls be switched on. It is crucial that each lock has only one key and that key is carried by the worker. Tags are used to indicate which workers have locked out the controls. This grain system control demonstration panel helps us understand the use of lockout tagout procedures. The panel includes some lights and audio warnings for demonstration. These are not normally found on control panels and should not be relied upon. The first control on the panel is the main disconnect box, which in this case is a circuit breaker. This controls power to the entire system, and if we want to turn off power to the entire system, we switch this off and lock out the box and take the key with us. If more than one worker is working on equipment and needs the power to remain off, a special hasp is used to allow multiple locks and workers each take the key to their lock. Tags indicate who has locked out the panel. Not until all workers have removed their locks can the power be switched on. One nice thing about these particular locks is that the key will not come out of the lock when the lock is in the open position. The key stays with the lock when it is not being used. These locks and other lockout equipment can be purchased from safety supply or industrial supply outlets. Many times we do not want to switch off the power to the entire system, but just switch off and lock out certain parts of the system. The grain leg control is represented by this single throw switch. To lock out the power to the leg, we simply put the switch in the off position and put a lock in the switch. As before, if more than one worker is involved, a multi-lock hasp is used. Note that this particular lock came with two keys. Each lock must only have one key. Having a second key available to other workers violates the basis of lockout tagout procedures. In this case, the second key must either be discarded or kept in a locked compartment in the office where only the manager can access it. Now we move to another breaker box, this one having six different breakers to control various parts of our system. The first breaker is for a fan, and we will skip that for now and come back to it. Let's say we have all the other parts of the system in the on position and we want to shut off and lock out several of them. There are special devices that are designed specifically for locking out individual breakers. We will demonstrate three of these devices now. For simplicity, we will omit the tags on the locks. Always make sure the device is properly placed on the breaker and prevents the breaker from being turned on. If we have multiple workers on one part of the system, we can use another multi-lock device that fits into the relatively small holes of these lockout devices. Last, let's look at the fan controls. The fan has its own breaker, but it also has a separate on-off switch. Then it has a push-button start-stop switch. This demonstration panel has a small fan to represent a full-size fan. When the start button is pushed, the fan starts and the light comes on. 
If we want to lock out the fan, we might decide to use a lock on the on-off switch. However, when we push the start button, the light still comes on briefly, although the fan does not start. For demonstration purposes, an alarm sounds. What this shows is that this particular wiring setup provides current to the push button start-stop switch, even when the fan switch is turned off. If we want to make sure no current is available anywhere in the circuit, we have to turn off and lock out the fan breaker. There are two lessons here. First, we should always verify that a circuit or piece of equipment is indeed isolated from the energy source. This is the isolation verification that we referred to earlier. Second, every operator of a grain system must understand how the circuits work and what must be shut off and locked out in order to make the system safe.